All right, so it's been a while since I've made a video, but I'm busy finalizing some new federation features around software streaming. And I thought it probably it would be a good idea to walk through some of the challenges that I have to try and solve in here. So this is particularly for Next.js at the moment. And the idea is to get module federation to work on the server and work more or less the same way that the browser would. So code needs to come over the network. Chunks need to load just like the would in the browser, be able to inject them, so on. And so far we have promising results. Um, and the, what I have at the moment, can you just kind of go and show this a bit, is I've got three Next.js applications here, like so. And how they would usually be loading would be, if I go into the page, the first thing that I've gone in here and done is uh, we have problems with async in Next.js. So a good workaround to install that async boundary is to just make all your pages dynamically imported. Uh, how Next build works under the hood is it looks at your pages directory and it takes all of the JavaScript files in here and it generates a bunch of entry points for them. As such, uh, that's our async boundary that we can access. So usually you would have a bootstrap file and a single entry point. In Next case, each page is the bootstrap file. And all I'm doing is I pull it in, I use Next Dynamics so that the server waits for it, and then I import it here. This gets the promise to resolve ahead of time before we get to Next Dynamic, and it also gets the data fetching to work. So now anything inside of my actual pages can use federated imports. They can be synchronous or dynamic, can use require, whatever I would want. And in this case, I've got the header inside of app, I think. Yes, header is inside of app. This is the checkout application, and the header is, oh, my bad. This is the home application, so this is where header is from. If I go into the checkout application, and I look at underscore app, I've got the header as well, but the header is loaded through module federation. And you could also do that, or a top level await if you wanted to, and it will load. So port 3000 is the checkout port. If I load the page, I have JavaScript disabled. You'll see my header always server-side renders, as I would expect. Then what I have been working on quite recently is the capability to federate an entire page from a different application. So inside of the checkout app, uh, I usually in my demos just have like a catch-all. So the server will render nothing and the front end will recover and pull it up. So if you do a client side route to a different app, it'll use federation to pull it in. And I was relying mostly on my ingress to handle the initial server render. So um, you know if I go to forward slash, it'll bounce me to the Lambda that actually hosts the home page. Uh, and then the failover is if you know you're on the checkout app and you want to load the home page, make it work kind of like a single page app, it'll just fall back and do that at the front end with the service discovery. And so this is usually like how it used to look. And what I'm going to try doing is I'm just going to go back and replace this with the old pattern that I had before. And you should be able to see the difference here. So I'm just going to build and restart all three apps. And what should happen in that case is it should just be the nav rendered here because there's no page being federated in. So it's just going to be like an empty block. And that's kind of how I've been proving out that SSR at the page level is working and that I can stitch pages from you know, various applications uh, at runtime. But there are some interesting challenges that do arise here. And the one is, in order for Next.js to actually execute correctly, it needs to be tracking the module IDs it should wait for. So 
what I had to go out and do is locate all the federated imports inside of the application or the host. And I then have to embed the JavaScript chunks from the other remote application that's being pulled down. So when I do a server render, I can print out the JS that actually is required for this thing to kickstart. Uh, and there's two reasons that I need to do that. The one is so that the apps hydrates correctly uh, in the front end. And the other reason is that is what uh, Next Dynamic is tracking. So it creates the import, like the kind of import mapping for it. And when Next starts up and finds async, um, async imports, it can preload those imports ahead of time. So when the synchronous render happens, it already has whatever it wants. So I came out with this concept of a, a chunk flush, and that's kind of what I've been using. But there are some additional challenges that start happening when you get into like a nested remote pattern. And I'll try to go over those. So anyway, I've, I've switched back to the typical way that I would run one of these applications. And there we go. So this is how it used to work. The server doesn't own the page, so it can't federate it on the server side. It will render nothing. The header it can still federate in. And then if I turn on JavaScript and reload the page, you'll see you know, now the, the, at runtime, it pulls in the page and kind of side loads it in. So I wanted to get away from having to do that and see if I could try to make a Next.js app that just is the shell and everybody else could then just deploy pages and not actually have a Lambda or server attached to it, just upload static assets. So I'm gonna go back, change this to use home slash home. So obviously it's coming from the home page, the home application, and I have it mapped to this index file. And that's what it's gonna pull in here. And so now if I start the application again, and I'm just doing this in a production build because it's a little bit easier to diagnose certain things. And production build is usually where if there is a problem, it's gonna arise there. Um, in this whole project as well, I'm also working out hot reloading. And I believe I have that solved, but I was noticing some strange glitches when doing nested remotes. So I'm able to more or less get the render to happen the way that I want it to. And if uh, a remote updates, it will the server will perform like a stale or revalidate pattern and hot reload itself while responding back with whatever request was required. And you know, that would pretty much, you wouldn't need to restart the machines or anything like that when a remote gets updated. It will just automatically handle it. All right, so now I've got the page coming in here. I'm going to disable JavaScript, and you can see the page shows up. So it is server-side rendering it, which is really great. The challenge that I've run into here is that inside of my home page, Let's see if I'm in the right place. Inside of my home page, I have this other independent remote. So this is now a third remote that the home page is going to load in. And it's just called other component. And I believe that it's, it's just this text that's hidden behind here. So if I enable JavaScript again, it should just say like testing, testing. And so that's the remote that I, um, that's like pretty much my nested remote. And the challenge that I run into here is I don't know that that remote is used ahead of time. So I don't really have a way to load it as part of the graph. As Webpack and, and Next is executing this application, it's going to see it needs the home page that's tracked with Next Dynamic. It's going to wait until that import comes in. Once the import comes in, it's then going to execute the page inside of it. And now that page has additional side effects on top of it. And now the problem that we end up having is I couldn't track those imports further down. So Next isn't aware that there are other things that are going to be resolved. I think the other part of the problem is those imports are only executed on demand. So until I actually try to render the page, the runtime isn't being activated. So it just isn't aware that the side effect exists inside of the graph because we don't ever call that get, that low level get until we're actually trying to render a component. 
And usually if you're just starting up a graph in full async mode, it would be fine. In here, we kind of are shimming our way around it. So it's a little bit trickier to discover what we need when everything has to be synchronous. But uh, I do have a couple solutions that I've been working on for this. And it pretty much resolves around this plugin that I've got that enables the software stream. So the idea that I'm playing around with here is I'm thinking about trying to create like a cache. So when I get the remote, I'm first going to grab the request, store it in this little cache, and then resolve the, the cached request if I already have one. Otherwise, I'll go out and do the fetch. I'll return the, the getter uh, back out. But in the background, I'm going to go and get the module off of it when the promise is resolved and then store this module over here on the cache. The next time this is asked for, it can just read it out of here. And the reason that I'm kind of having to do some of this is hopefully what I'm going to be able to do is create like a chunk flush mechanism ahead of time where I can flush the remotes out, store everything that I need synchronously. And when the render happens, I can just have whatever I need already pre-resolved. But I'm not sure if that is quite enough to handle it. But I do have a workaround that I can go back and use if I need to. Um, but the other, the other idea that I've got down here is uh, everything uses promise, new promise. And the idea in here is I was seeing a lot of like network chatter that would end up happening. Like, I don't know if I still have it in the logs here. Like all of this stuff would come up. And every time I would load another remote, because all of these promise new promise runtimes are kind of independent templates, uh, the system wouldn't necessarily be aware that a remote had already been loaded. So it would try to restream a remote module back down. In the browser, we don't have this issue because it just goes onto the window. So Webpack just searches for the window, sees something's there resolves everything out to it. Um, but inside of the code stream, the promise new promise is initiating the stream to pull down whatever the remote um, container is. And I didn't have a way to actually store it. So each time I was restreaming that container. So what I went in here and did, and I probably need to move this around a bit, but general idea is to create some kind of like window object here with the loaded remotes. If one already exists, then just put it back in. Otherwise, create a new object. Um, if a loaded remote already exists, then I'm just going to resolve the already existing remote and send it back to the interface. If not, I'm going to execute a load, get the container API, and then finally set it on the global and resolve it. And this is pretty much like how I do it in the browser as well. Then um, where this is tricky is even if I go and crawl the remotes ahead of time, it seems like it's not quite enough to actually get the graph instantiated the way that it needs to be. And I think my theory on that is that these next dynamics, if the import resolves or if it comes back as like an empty thing or something, it probably checks if it's pending, it's just gonna send it out as null or something like that. Or potentially I've got this happening up in here where some of these things are just lazily processed. So it is a little tricky to try and figure out. And then the other challenge that we've got is, well, when I update a remote, how do I actually hot reload this, this whole system? Um, with, the, with this issue kind of solved, well, uh, let, let's just put in the hack and we can we can kind of go from there and see how this will work. So the dirty workaround that I've got, which I don't want to use, is if I go over to my checkout application here, and I'm just going to go into the document of it. Inside of the document, I flush out my chunks. This will kind of preload all the known remotes in the system. And then what I can go in here and do is if I just run get initial props once, it's going to pretty much kind of do like a pre-render on it. It'll execute the app however it needs to be. Any additional side effects that are discovered would then be found. And 
But then when I actually go and execute it for real this time, all the remote references have all been resolved because of this chunk flush. So I've loaded everything into memory. I then execute this. I now don't have to go and stream any remotes on demand during the render. It got all of it ahead of time. And now I'm just executing it to see if there's any additional parts of the Webpack graph that need to be rehydrated. The challenge that I'm going to have with this approach is because I am caching the remotes in this kind of global object now, it won't restream them every time. And because it's in memory, and I'm telling this whole app to kind of short circuit if it's in memory, I'm not sure if I can flush the, the uh, node cache and get it to restream chunks and basically hot reload. So I'm going to test this out and see what happens. But I might have to implement a additional boundary, which would be this needs a prehydration kind of setup. And if that's the case, what I would most likely end up doing is I would run my get initial to load all of this stuff. Ahead of time, I do the real one that spits everything out. And then I would have this revalidate call that I kind of send on finish. And what the revalidate call is going to do is it's going to attempt to see if the remotes have updated. And if the remotes have updated, this is the place where I could trigger a hot reload. Uh, in this case, the hot reload that I would want to trigger would have to be to flush the loaded remotes clean out of the global object. Otherwise, I'm not going to get any hot updates in. So let us see what I can do here. So I'm still trying to wire this up, and hopefully I can deploy it up to Versal and demonstrate how this will work. But for right now, I am going to load all of this stuff in here. Perfect. Got JavaScript disabled. I'm going to reload the page. Testing one, two, three. Let me just turn off JavaScript here. All right. Cool. So I've got that testing thing. That's really what I'm looking for is the, that word there. Then I'm going to go over to this independent remote here. And we're just going to do something like, like that. Now, these would already have been imported and loaded in, which means this cache is going to be filled. So this revalidate function should trigger, and it would require us to hot reload the app. So I'm going to rebuild our independent remote here and just put it back online. And waiting for that to come up. And hopefully what we will see is it'll tell us something like a hash just changed. It'll start running a bunch of stuff in the console. And then if I refresh the page, I believe that it will probably not work in the current setup because the remotes are probably still going to be in memory. Because I now I'm resetting the Webpack graph, but I'm telling Webpack to look at like a window object to see if this remote was already loaded and then stick to it. So I have to clear out that global object in order for the stream to actually take effect. Okay, so now I'm going to reload this page. Haha, <laughs> can't find module. There we go. Okay, fetching remote again. Hash is different on independent remote, and it's going to try to reload the server. Now I'm getting into my server.js file. And this is where things will probably break because I'm still working out how to reconnect all the hot reloading with the changes that I've just implemented. So I can't find the server module in here, which is fine. Uh, what I would do is go down to the server folder in here. And I have probably disabled the whole hot reload capability. Yeah, so this is just a stock standard like Versal, st Versal type server. I come in here and it is going to complain that it cannot find my server file because it is now an empty context. And if I see that error get thrown 
out. Let's see, independent remote, yep. Then I believe how we can handle it is this is usually where I would use like my load mechanism to reload the application. But I don't have that right now, so I can try to bring it back if I want. But for the purposes of this, I don't really need to have it exactly how it was before. I'll see that it is failing on my loop over. So I'm just looking through my module set here inside of the document. Okay, so if it's in the document, then that would mean it's my flush chunk. And then inside of here, I have a revalidate call. All right, so there's my revalidation. It's going to run, fetch the remotes again, check if there's any difference in the remote. If there is, it will call that if I have it. And then I will go over my keys and pretty much start to reset the application. And where it seems to fail over on me is reference architecture cannot find a checkout slash server. And this could be because it's looking under the wrong context or just because the way that I reset it, I can't just go in and rehydrate the require cache like this. So I don't believe I actually have to run that require. So we're going to try and do some kind of a hot reload on this thing without re-requiring the code on the fly. I've mostly been focusing a lot on the Versal side to see if I can get this deployed up to Versal and get it to hot reload. And for the most part, it does work. But the thing that I've been getting caught out on has been the lazy discovery of additional parts of the Webpack graph. So I've kind of torn some pieces down in an attempt to see how best I could resolve this problem. But in doing so, I might have messed up the custom server setup. Usually locally when you're developing, what I'll do is just create a cluster and that hot reload event triggers the cluster and restarts it. And that solves most of the dev issues or in production, I can just do like a kind of a, a simpler reload. On the Lambda though, it's a little bit different. So uh, trying to cater for all the variants is a little bit tricky. So I'm just trying to focus on like subset and then I can revert and patch things back together as I need to, to get uh, local express, the normal versal one where it just uses this. And then finally one, one more, which would work on like uh, AWS container or something. All right, so my build stage is finalizing. We'll see what we get out of it now. Should probably run in development mode just to be faster. Cool. All right, so gets everything that I want it to. It's obviously blank because it only discovered the side effect after the fact. If I go back here, just do something like that. Run it again. I'm going to see what kind of hot reload error it'll throw under how I've got this thing currently configured. And usually, if I'm using Express, I have to flush the root stack because everything gets cached in there. So I'm trying to just use the standard HTTP one. And if you're in production mode, you shouldn't really have to um, like re restart anything because there's no root stacks or anything to get in the way. So it's a little easier to manipulate the memory of it. But it will probably ah, there we go. All right, cool. So perfect. Just re-requiring it that quick doesn't uh, play nicely. So the Remote was different. It must hot reload. It still has my name here. So I respond with the request currently. And in the background, I will check if there's any update and hot reload after I've already sent a response. And now if I refresh the page again, it will not hot reload it. 
but I did not get the update or it didn't restream what I wanted to. And that is because my hash is different, but I still have everything persisted in memory. So I am kind of restreaming things, but not entirely because I have this custom cache layer that I've built. So as a way to test this, inside of the checkout one, I can go revalidate that then. So this only this callback only happens if there is new modules. And then inside of here, what I would probably do is um, yeah, I would take that, reset the global remotes. That should cause them to now restream. Plus, I'm busting the require cache, so it's going to reinvoke everything. And then I would just say that it needs prehydration again. And so I only need to do this when I hot reload it. What I have to run this workaround for right now. So whenever it detects a change, flush the, the my remote storage and then set it for prehydration and that'll do my graph discovery that I want. All right. So now if needs prehydration, yep, that should run it through the correct order of things. Perfect. All right. And I'll have to start this one more time. And then we'll see if it'll receive an update on the first run. So I'm looking, I know it's hard to see, but this text is hidden behind this box. But what I want to see is this text change when I refresh this page after pushing a new remote update out. So once the server comes back up, I should see, you know, a number there. Then I'm going to rebuild and restart this one, change this again, refresh the page, and I should immediately see a different piece of text show up there without having to restart the server again. And then if all of that works, I will attempt to redeploy this up to Versal. And then I can you know, deploy this independently and see if it grabs it on the first invocation, which, I mean, it works in Versal right now, but I can show you the kind of problem I run into. Let's see. All right, so if I go to the checkout one here, and I'm going to hit the home page of checkout, which is the, the home app that I'm pulling down. And it kind of works, comes in here, but you'll see there's a bit of a jump. See how this thing like pops in a little late? And my page should show up quicker. So if I go and I work around the cache and I reinvoke the Lambda, you'll see that now that testing testing is always there and the SSR shows up. And that's pretty much because the promise had run. I still hit the same Lambda. It's still warm and it hydrated it further. So back on 3000. Oh my. Fetching remote again. So my revalidate call came back. Oh, and on the revalidate, it's going to call the hot load. That's right. So I would want to do something like just for right now, this isn't a very clean way to do it, but but I think I can do something like that. And I'm just going to tell it ahead of time that your, your hot load command is to perform the following actions upon, uh, you know, plus doing whatever it needs to go off and, and do in general. And it looks like the problem failed. Yeah, because that's not a venable. All right. So if it needs to revalidate, it will call this hot load function. And I can use this to flush um, express routes or anything else. Um, and then internally inside of here, I can mark this as it needs to be prehydrated again. And I can you know, run this twice until I can crawl the chunk flushing a little bit more reliably and try to pull out the side effects and preload it. Um, so when it starts, the all the closures and references are already there. I don't have to like double kickstart it just so that the, the graph is fully attached.
All right. And now if I refresh this page, let's just see if it will recover. It looks like I am hanging for an additional load. Okay, there we go. And I've got just my page showing up, which is what I expect. The second run, okay, great, I've got that in there. I'm gonna go here, change the text again. Build and start this, creates a new hash, because it's obviously changed. And then it should hot reload in the background here. We will see. And all of this stuff was already more or less working. The only issue I've really been running into is with nested remotes, um, the Lambda needed to be invoked twice in order for me to get that. So the cache would end up looking really weird because sometimes you get a cache hit or a mismatch as things are there and not there, depending on which invocation cycle you've already gone through. All right, so now I'm gonna hit this again. Ah, and there we go. Now I've got my numbers still here, which is what I want. The hash is different, it must hot reload, and now we can test to see if it actually did hot reload it. So it looks like it went and restreamed everything. And needs to fetch the remote again, okay. Perfect, okay, so the hot reload mostly works. So now I'm getting this testing, testing to come back. But again, it's still only on the second function call that's made. So what I can try and do is just dig through here and see if my prehydration call actually gets run the second time. Because if this is here, it should kind of solve thing I'm trying to solve, but I might also need an additional piece of code inside of the Webpack runtime. So let's just check if it's actually rerunning. It is prehydrating. And then it will run that if it is, and then it'll you know do the normal render that it would typically do as long as that's been reset to true. So we'll see if I even get into the prehydration step. If I do, then I've got an idea on where the problem could be coming from because I get my chunk flushing up here. I don't even need to do this twice, just have it from something I did before. But I am currently trying to move all of this into the into this chunk chunk flush mechanism. So it'll discover whatever it needs to do, kind of invoke it all, and attach as much as possible, scan the app, make sure everything's attached, and then do whatever it needs to. But I, I had to make another change in the webpack runtime in order to make sure that this thing executed the way that I wanted to. And I just removed that. So I'm wondering if that's had an impact here. But uh, we are going to see what ends up getting called. Mostly, I just want to know if that exists or not. And then inside of here, I've got my revalidator, the chunk flush. All right, this is where I grab all the chunks that I'm after. Then if I go to my chunk runtime, Jump into here. I believe the piece that I have changed is I've got my remote globals that I set up on here. And then inside of my promise templates, I will execute my load and set it. If it exists, I will resolve to that. And then up in here, what I'm trying to do is to call my getter over here, get the remote that I'm after, 
and then store that in the cache so it'll come out of this and return that instead of uh, rerunning it over here. But I did recently just kind of refactor this, so I might need to revert some of this if, um, if it still doesn't show up correctly on that first render. Because what I was doing in here is when the remotes would run, they would also check their own mappings and load anything that they might require ahead of time from their, their own chunk map. I removed that because I thought if I'm doing it in the chunk loader, I probably don't need to have it inside of the runtime itself, but it might need that preheating level that far down. So we're just going to see what it ends up doing on this call. OK, so it is prehydrating. And yeah, we can see in here, I get all of my remotes, but I don't have like, there's this big block that'll come back. This is like test, test. Um, if that's not coming back, then I believe my clever little mechanism here does not actually help us out. So I'm going to try and revert some of this and get rid of this little cache because I don't really think that I need it. I was just trying to offer a faster way to get it synchronously. But it looks like that might not actually be helpful. So then I believe in here I've got my load remote. If the remote load exists, let me just undo all of this and get back the previous template that I had in here. All right, let's see. So at some point, uh, and I've hit the end of my undo history, of course. All right, let's just track back through here. I'm just trying to see where the load convention. All right, yeah, this is pretty much what I'm looking for is this kind of pattern on it. And so this is what I was using before. which is going to have a few other adjustments required. So I'm going to do my request inside of here. It's going to return this global, but I am calling it loaded remote so I can track the object. So I've got my proxy. I go through here. I get whatever the module is, I do a return chain on it, I return whatever I need to return here, and then down here in the global, I would be, let's see, do I resolve this ever? Get all the promises in here, then I create my object proxy, and then I would return the object proxy. So in this case, I'm just going to return, yeah, just going to return the proxy. And what I would do is in here, I would have my global set up now. I'm going to check if it exists. And then I would go, or here, hold on, give me a minute, we'll do... global.loaded remotes equals that. Otherwise, it equals an empty object. It doesn't exist yet. Using like a push function would be better, kind of like how the Webpack runtime does it. But this ought to kind of do what I want. Um, and then what I would be searching for in here would be if global loaded remotes, if the remote exists already, If it already exists, then I would return this. And 
and that would resolve this back to the webpack runtime so you know this is kind of like putting it on the window where i'm going to say if it's already on the window resolve it otherwise if it's not already on the window then what i would end up doing is I would set it here. So then it would be global remotes equals that. And then a resolve. And it'll be the same thing that I'm going to resolve back out of here. Yeah, that looks more or less right. And the nice thing is this template's used by everything. So if I use this at build time or if you use this at runtime, it'll all register on the same thing. So I can dynamically load this code and it's still tracked by Webpack the way that I want it to be. And that will just return a proxy. And hopefully the idea here is when I ask for a remote, the remote's gonna go through all of its exposed modules, attempt to load them, attempt to execute the function on them, catch it if it can't. And then um, it will finally just return uh, this venable Inside of it, I create a proxy, and I would return the proxy back out. We'll see if I did this in the right order. And I think that might be the missing piece. Otherwise, the other way that I was doing it before was um, I just put that in there again, and it worked. But I'd like to not have to run this, ideally ever, more than the initial render that it takes. So it could also just be a order of operations thing like um, these flushes might not have all the remotes attached to them the right way. Because I think that the remotes environment variable is not the global one. So it might just be an async problem in my cache, but it's hard to determine exactly what is not loaded into memory at the right time. So for now, I'm just trying to see what the options are get it running. Okay, yep, I tried catch, of course it didn't work. Where do I have it? Yep, put nothing in there. Then, yeah, okay, cool, all of that should just work. My remote get is mapped to that remote get, so that should be fine. And the getter of the remote is going to be the original runtime that I've got. I pull that in and then I attach something on top of that runtime. And this is where I would look at like if I could build in a cache or something. But I think if this is coming from a global, when I pass the load in here, it should all be attached to just one interface. So it'll do the same thing that I'm trying to achieve, which is to stop code from streaming more than it actually needs to stream. So, we will see. But it is pretty close, which I'm very happy about. I haven't pushed any of this stuff up to sort out the invocation issue, but if it works here, then I should be able to cut a release, put it on, on Versal. And we might actually see the first invocation that you do. It'll have all the HTML each time, and we won't get the jitter in the cache as you hit different instances or stale or revalidate kicks in, but you go to a different Lambda that needs to be invoked. And it's just missing some of the context here. What I'd probably need to do in the longer run is update the Federation interface on the remotes and have them pass their, their dependency mappings up to next host and then kind of attach it onto the react loadable manifest as additional module ids that have to be loaded then the server will wait for that to be loaded before it attempts to execute otherwise it just skips the promise and continues running um, which is what i run into over here so we will see the nice thing though is uh if you just use this for not nesting remotes, the whole render will happen on the first go. Like for my nav, that works just fine. But um, if I pull in another page, the page is a little bit trickier than our navigation just because I think also of how um, 
page container is loaded. I don't have like a proper import on there. Like it's just, you know, dynamically import home. So I don't have like my synchronous uh, import statement in here to kind of trigger the load the way that I want it to be triggered. So I think it skips it sometimes and it just continues on. But we're going to confirm if that's actually the case or not. Because in theory, if I land on this, I should it should hold up on the get initial props and wait for home to come in. But if I'm still seeing a blank here, then that means that um, I've skipped a step somewhere else and the app isn't actually heated up correctly yet. But we can put some logs in here and see what do we get back out. Like, is it in the right order or not? Or is it um, just getting skipped? So let's see what we end up getting here. Okay, first render, that's fine. Yeah, see, I want the something else text to show up. So if I end up getting my something else text, it got the outside component now, which is what I want. And that's the like nested one that's you know further off the off the tree. Um, and then in here, I'm just going through and like loading as many of the remotes as I as I can just to see what it's going to do. So if we go back into here, I'm going to first just get rid of this chunk flush because I don't need both of them there. I've got the prehydration stage, which takes off here. Um, and then the question is, do I want to flush the chunks ahead of time or do I want to flush the chunks lower down in the in the call? That's the one thing I'm not entirely sure of just yet. But I'm just going to try moving it down so it's in between the next load and see if this has any kind of effect on when it gets rendered. Because what I'm wanting to see is that the page shows up correctly and fully renders and it's very strange that like my app will do that because i am getting the nav from another remote and then if i go down here to the page why can i not pull in a page using the same convention why does it skip that on the first run so we're gonna see if we can uh do anything to this and make it work because I am using the dynamics here. The only thing I can think of is I don't actually create a real async boundary. So I'm not going into like real pages. So it might be skipping the stage, but we can always look at what page returns and see if we actually uh, get the API back out of it on the first pass that happens or on any pass that happens, does it return? Because yeah, home slash home, it should it should exist. Come on now. And I've also seen this problem before in the past where when you try to do it on the server, it like skips the first require and then it kicks in. But I'm pretty sure I've solved this in the past. So I just need to go in here and like look a little closer at how the code gets executed. If it's getting executed in the right um, order that it's supposed to be. But if I like double require it or something weird, it seems to register it. So I know it's just something to do with the chunk registration that has probably been missed. See, I get in the home page, which is what I want. Perfect. Ah, that actually um, that worked through and through. All right, so it looks like my chunk load order has something to do with it, but this is perfect. So this is exactly what I wanted to get is I booted the server and on the first time I get these something else calls in here. I get the other component, which means on my first render, I actually have everything that I want. I'm not missing any of the modules. Um, so now if I go back here and just change this to 
change that. Start this again. Then I will reload my page. I will still see the current result that I've got. And then what will happen is it will flush the cache remove my my global it's like a page reload and then mark it that it needs to be prehydrated again and now when i do the next render and invoke this thing again it's going to stream the code down fresh um i could potentially optimize this just have to see about how like the lambda invocations work because i'm not sure if this on event actually sticks around and gets fired correctly in um, serverless environments but if it does then what i would probably do is um respond to the request, check if the uh, chunks are still valid. If the chunks are not valid, run my hot load and then actually reinvoke the document here. So I pretty much refill the Webpack runtime after sending it to the end user. And when the next request comes in, it's already heated again. Uh, and that would be more of like a full hot reload instead of like partial disp disposal. Then when the next hit comes in, I restream whatever I want. Okay, so now if I refresh this page, the hash is different, must reload server. I still have my test here. So I still have the cache result from last time, but it should now have like kind of done stale while revalidate in the background. So when I run this again, boom, there we go. And now these remotes, you know, independently load, pretty much. Um, and the server is hot reloading on a request. And if I go and refresh it again, it's not going to go and stream all this code down every single time. And I still have JavaScript disabled here. So all of this is without um, JavaScript. So if I enable JS now, then, you know, here's how the application would look. Have some weird styling things, so it jumps around a bit. Um, but now that this is functional, I think what we can try is I'm going to revert my server for right now because this app prepare works great in production mode where I can flush this stuff. But in development mode, I need some kind of like threaded option. So the server that I actually keep around here for my local environment is um, kind of messy, but I have this kind of start prod command, start dev command. And since these servers don't work on Versal anyway, it never gets deployed. So it's only if you run like your own Lambda or whatever, then you would want this file. But for the purposes of testing this, I need to be able to hit, um, I, need, I need to build some kind of mechanism that's just gonna work inside the Versal environment. All right, so with this all updated, what we should be able to do is I'm just going to do a little cleanup on this. Let's see. Okay. See if I can get rid of some of these uh, logs that I've polluted this with. Okay, yeah, I'll keep that because I want to know. Yeah. Okay, I don't really care about that, and I'm not doing anything with it anyway. So that's the old preload that I had. Yeah, okay, that's a little bit cleaner. Come down here. Okay, in the sidecar. Yeah, that all looks fine. Okay, so I'm just going to diff it really quick and see if there's any meaningful changes in here I need to be worried about. Yeah, put cache busting on there to get around the front end cache when something updates. On chunk loading. Yeah, cache busted on there as well. Okay. Over here, I'm going to preheat the require cache, filter it down, attach everything. Yep. I have the preload array here so that I can wait on it. I iterate over the chunk map. I get back all the preloads. Okay, yeah, this looks this looks fine to publish out. 
Okay, 33. And let's see, where's my publish function? Okay. So we'll see if this actually works um, when deployed. So I'll replace all of these. Yep. Yeah, re-yarn the app. Just push this up for now. And I've only really edited the checkout app here with that updated document stuff. So I need to like move things around and make it a little bit more presentable. But for right now, I think this ought to be good enough to see if it either works or doesn't work. So I go here and just yarn this. Oh, and then the last thing I need to do is go into the next environments here. And I need to replace this with the hosted one. So let me just check what my diff looks like here. Cool, yeah. So that's where this remote sits. And so this is just a different repo, pretty much, that I can try deploying independently because everything I have is in this one big mono repo. So it becomes a little tricky to know if um, the rebuild is because the Lambda restarted or if the rebuild is because I did a hot reload. All right, so. That should do that. I'm gonna try this on send and see if it um, if it gets called. Like I really don't know if uh, this finish request is um, is ever invoked. Um, but I think what I can probably do, I guess for now, I'll just send it up there and see if it even if if this log happens or anything like that. And if not, I can redeploy it with something else. Okay, so the document, I just added that on there for home. We'll log the page for now just to see. Other component, I change it from an import to synchronous just to see if that makes any difference. Okay. Cool. So then I can go to this checkout app and then let me just get to Versal over here. And I just want to go to the checkout one. And we will see if, all right, cool. So it's queued for deploy. And as soon as this is up, I mean, we might even see some, some logs start happening here because I've started to make changes to things, but we will give it a moment. Just let this build go through. And then if this works, then there we go. I should see, I should have the ability to basically hot reload the app, update code from a different repo, deploy it, refresh the page, and the markup is updated as well as um, you know everything else. No restarts needed or anything like that. The next challenge would be to try and isolate the executions that are happening. And I believe that will be possible to do. It's just a little bit harder. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to actually do that for versal testing. So I think probably what I'll end up doing is uh, use the single threaded approach here. And then I will work on, more on the custom server side to enable some kind of a isolate pattern where I can execute this render elsewhere. The nice thing though is um, the only real piece that I've got to do is run this document and get initial props. And I just need to run that somewhere in the application. Um, so what I could do is, I haven't tried this yet, but possibly I could use like the host uses its own remote, pull the document in onto a worker thread, 
pass the context to it, and it will return the HTML and the next data. And I could just sit here and have it wait for this other thread to perform the render and then respond to the request with that render. And then I could shut down that worker pool. And that would prevent um, anything like a syntax error or something crashing the main application inside of um, inside of whatever host is running. And you know, it would also help with like trying to put some kind of isolate patterns in place and stuff like that for security. But before any of that, just need to make sure it can hot reload itself. All right, still busy building these out. And we'll see what shows up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, first no cache. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm pretty sure if I were to run this now, I would see the independent remote be changed. Yeah, see, testing, testing. So the other remote's already up, and it already has shown me the updated result. The, the question here is, uh, did it do so without uh, server rendering? So if I invoke it again, yeah, see, so I'm still waiting on this thing to get deployed. And this is the old problem that I would have, where now the home page shows up because I've hydrated that first part of it. And each invocation here, it looks like it's trying to stream it again or something. So, yeah, I mean, it's doing what I would expect it to. Okay, so now if I reload this application, it should be a full invocation. Okay, cool. So now testing, testing, everything shows up first, the right time, which is what I want. And just look at it again with JavaScript enabled this time. And we can see what we get. All right, cool. So that is what I want. Then I'm just going to go over here and pull up the function logs. Let's see, we get unhandled rejection. Client socket was disconnected. Lambda runtime failed. Post handler success response from static chunk 245. All right, I don't think that's too big of a problem for me to worry about right now. Just see if it pops up again when I load. The application cool requested remote it does whatever it needs to do to validate itself um, I can probably improve the the chunk flush cache because I don't need to run the flush every time it can once it's flushed I can just uh, store it so I don't need to like actually await it so I think I'm probably going a little overboard on on that part which is slowing down the the application load but that's fine it's easy enough to fix and now what I should be able to do is, let's see, what do I currently have deployed out there? Testing, testing, cool. So now we're going to update this component. And we're just gonna turn off JavaScript again because I really want to see. Now, like my test is obviously gonna be weird again, but I, we should see this little text pop up behind this box when uh when it starts. Some of this uses styled JSX, so without a or it depends on state. So without runtime being set, it looks a little bit weird. In a real application, we probably wouldn't have it look that broken, but it's good enough for testing purposes. Okay, cool. So it should be on its way up. And I'm just going to keep these logs open here. I'll have to go and see what the socket issue is here, like 
where the connection is reset. Looks like when it was uh, connecting to the independent remote. So potentially um, during the stream there, it got interrupted. Maybe because that Lambda uh, just redeployed itself. So yeah, there's some things that still have to be kind of looked at, especially from like a retry standpoint. Runtime exit with the following error. Yeah, it's not really a big train smash, to be honest. All right, and I'm just gonna sit here for a moment. Let me go pull up the independent remote just to see when it's done. Cool, it's in the process of building now. Oh, actually, I think it's already uh, completed the update. Okay, cool. So now if I reload this page, let's see what we get. Okay, so that purges the cache. So it looks like my hot reload still has a bit of a quirk in it. Check out, the remote is not online or cannot be accessed. And yeah, the client network socket disconnected. So I'll have to look at what causes the disconnection. This is definitely new, but that's the first time I've been seeing it. So I'm pretty sure I just have some problem in one of my loops. Cool, and there's the text, and yeah, okay, so then there's the text that has been updated. So this application was never redeployed or anything like that, but I've got the updated HTML from my remote component, and it shows up as I would expect it to. And then if I want to verify that, I can always just go look in here and search for, yeah, and there's a hit. So it's definitely being updated, which is fantastic. And then, yeah, the only thing that needs to be looked at, and then here we go, you can see it's now kicking out, got outside component, got everything that I want, and then sends it back. So the only piece I really want to try and get a better grip on is why my remotes would sometimes just disconnect from each other. And this could also be after the fact, but I don't think that that would actually be where this problem would come from. So yeah, it probably needs a retry event or something on here just to prevent any connection resets from happening or at least not disrupting the actual load. It also seems kind of strange because it's only when I'm uh, requesting a chunk that it seems to complain. But when I actually hit the page and invoke the Lambda, you know, it's these are all the bits that I want for it. Uh, I've got one over here where it did the same connection reset to the UI. Okay. So yeah, there's definitely something to improve upon. But I'm wondering what actually causes that. And I wonder if it's like a, a recurring issue, something pretty small that I've just introduced. So on the send event, I'm going to tell it it needs to reload, say it needs to be rehydrated. I'm going to revalidate, which will then call that method if it has to be. And then it's going to kickstart the app again. It will start running streams. I will get document. I will then flush the application again. 
and then I will call the actual document request again. And I'm wondering if it is um, this revalidate, if that request is going bad there because the connection is getting reset because the finish event has already happened and maybe the Lambda is just hanging up, which might be what happens. Yeah, it's not online. So an easy way to go and just check where this error comes from is to look through the SSR package. I'm pretty sure it is the chunk flush. Yeah, so see, I get down to here and then it hangs up on me. So I think most likely what happens is it's just it's just swallowing the, the error and throwing. So probably the Lambda exits too soon. Um, since I don't like await this or anything, I just let it run kind of haphazardly. Uh, and then I'll run my revalidation, which will go and fetch all these remotes again. And I guess what I might, what I could consider doing is revalidating it up front, but that could slow down an initial render. So I'm trying to avoid doing something like that. Um, I guess just to see what it will do. It would be interesting if we try saying, cool, it needs to rehydrate. And then I'm going to flush the chunks out. I'm not going to await any of this stuff. I'm just going to call it. And it might work, might not work. Um, but it will be interesting to see. I mean, this is probably going overkill on the number of like calls that I'm doing. So we can definitely make that better. But I just want to try and see, like, am I able to get it running the way that I want to? If I were to just preheat it once, this, this would most likely work. But what I'd prefer is some way in either my chunk flush or in the actual chunk load to kind of pre-inject it or at least get it into the graph or register additional module IDs or something like that. And I can make next continue to wait until whatever I'm trying to do is actually resolved. Um, I am curious if, uh, let's see if I just build and start. And if I load the page locally again on the first hit, is it still uh, is it still not rendering the whole document, or does it render the whole document locally? And it's a more problem of me running this in a lambda where I don't have like the container up and running until the invocation actually happens. So. It might be, there's like one little extra piece of setup here, but I'm not convinced that that's my problem. And if it says that the connection is interrupted, most likely what it is is it's just the connection, like the Lambda tore itself down in the middle of revalidating. So I might just have to start revalidation at the top and then wait until the finish command happens and then purge the cache. Um, because I, I would need at least to get the document back before purging the cache. Otherwise, I don't know if I'll be able to respond. So it's a little tricky, especially without like actual lifecycle attached. It limits the options that we have to work with here. But I do think that for the most part, I think we have it solved. The only, the only scenario I see where it might not work out uh, as well is if you're running this on Versal itself, if you ran this um, on your own Lambda, or if you had something where you've got you know, access to the server itself, I'm pretty sure that the, these issues won't really exist. But 
without access to the handler, it's a little tricky. But that's where I'm deploying, and I don't want to have to do it somewhere else. So let's see what we can do. All right, so everything came up here. It looks like I got something else. I got outside components, so it actually did hit it correctly and pull everything up on the first go. So that looks like this pattern could actually work. Um, I will imagine that this has been redeployed by now. Let's just go and see. It's still busy. Okay, great. Looks like it is up to date. And if I hit this again, and let's go view the function logs here. Let's just see if my, uh... all right, cool. So that shows up. That's the, that's the big thing. So now the first render came through correctly. Let's try it one more time and be sure. Perfect. Yep, that is what I want to see. Great, great. Okay, and now last thing is to change the independent remote again. Oh. Okay. And I believe I still have my local machine up. Great, so what I can do in here is I can clear this and we'll be able to see what, uh, what happens when that remote gets updated. In my other servers that I have, like when I'm running this usually, I've got some watch event in the background. So if you're running in development mode or um, running a production server that you know exists and stays online, then I will pull the remotes and recalculate their hash. If the remotes change, I will just automatically purge in the background. You can kind of see here, it's doing the fetching remote again. I imagine because I uh, switched back over to my, yeah, my normal dev and prod server, which runs inside of a cluster and can let me kind of just search continuously for uh, an update. And then when an update happens, it should just kind of under the hood go out and clear itself. Um, and running it in a cluster, I can invalidate part of the cluster while still responding to traffic. Uh, and so I can either invalidate it with like the hot reload that I use for Versal, or I can invalidate it with uh, just killing the current process that's out of date and spawning a new one while still responding with stale data on a different thread. And once the other process is restarted, I then kill whatever process was running um, as like the failover. And then, you know, kind of gives you the hot reload feel without ever tearing anything down and starting it again. Um, there we go. So now I know that the remote's updated because it just went and purged my cache. And if I were to load this page again, I don't know if it will load everything correctly. Yep, okay. That's because this server is now invalidating modules the old way, and I came up with a better way for it. All right, and then back here, this is the one that actually matters. Boom, look at that, from another repo. First time, hot reloaded. And inside of here i can see yeah it does the the reset connection so obviously the lambda started to die yeah get initial props fetching the remote again on send yep But what's strange is it looks like it hangs up on the fetch call, but it does actually get the stream to reinitialize. So it seems to function unless I uh, missed something there. Which is a good sign. Let's just check if this actually showed up in the document.
repo. Uh, it looks like that hot load is still, uh, it's not reliable enough to do it at that point. Ah, okay. Here we go. So this is what I want to see, is this, this kind of function call go out. Because now it's actually doing it again. So shows me the stale data. If it couldn't fetch or do whatever, it still shows me the stale one. And then within the next invocation that kicks off, it's going to go and actually pull down the component again, pull in the new stream, and it'll function. So it looks like the shutdown method that I'm using is like a little, it's a little too late in the, in the life cycle of the Lambda. Um, but even though that's still in the shutdown, it looks like it's being try-catched and it doesn't actually throw a real error to the application itself, which is what I was hoping um, would actually happen. So I am pretty happy with that. Yeah, there we go, from another repo. Yep, cool, it, it works. Boom, awesome. So that is service I'd rendered in there. So yeah, despite me finding a better life cycle to deal with Versal, um, that is module federation and hot reloading. And, you know, we can just kind of do a more normal browsing session here. Um, you know, I can jump in here. This is a different federated page than this application. This is all still on the checkout. Some of these apps are together. The only page checkout actually has this checkout page itself. So it is pretty quick too once everything gets up and running. Um, what we could attempt is one more test where I want to go and edit this nav. Um, but I think if I do change the nav, it's going to just force a whole uh, a full reload. But it's worth trying, and we'll see. I'm just going to remove this text out of it, and then we'll see what happens. So yeah, I would say the nice thing that this offers a potential to, especially if um, it seems to work reliably, is, you know, this checkout application has not been redeployed. I've deployed two updates to the background app, but this Lambda has stayed on the whole time, and we've just been able to hot reload portions of it. Um, what is also really neat about it is that, you know, the home page itself is not even on this checkout instance. So not only are we loading nested remotes here and here, and you know, all of this, but we're also loading the entire page itself and server-side rendering it, plus server-side rendering any other remotes that are inside of the page, as well as, you know, SSRing the nav, which comes from a different location. And, um, some hooks, other various things that we've got, root maps, logging systems, all of that. It's all being kind of centralized together here. And um, it is hopefully going to make life a bit easier. Like what I'm hoping will end up happening with this kind of thing is, um, you know, it's just gonna make like an app shell a lot easier to put together a lot fewer deployments between different applications. If an app needs something, it will update itself automatically. And you don't really have to worry about a whole bunch of um, orchestration. And where this could go, especially since this is now server-side rendering, um, remember most of the challenges that I'm facing right now, like where I had to invoke something twice or run the flush chunks thing twice, most of that is because I'm still using React 17. So the render isn't asynchronous, so I can't just find a promise and resolve it. I've got to like always cascade back to Webpack. Well, you know, what's the next chunk set before the render happens? So if it's not able to discover that and execute that tree, it can't um, necessarily know what's about to happen. When React 18 comes out, I won't have to do that crawl that I have to do currently to get the whole page to render on the first invocation. Um, which will be really, really great. 
uh, and yeah, when that comes out, it should make this whole async thing a whole lot easier to to do. And yeah, I would say what is going to be really cool with this is sure this is SSR, but this is essentially anything on the server. So you can pull in APIs, could hand things over to a different thread. Um, you know, anything that you could do on Node, you could essentially stream it across uh, without too many, you know, major challenges popping up. And I'm pretty sure that the ones we're even facing now, like with this stuff, I mean, I know that this dev thing's already because the flush that I do locally is really bad. So I need to clean it up now that I simplified how the hot reload works for reversal. Um, we can go and make some adjustments here. And that should get us to a state that we want it to be in, where it's just you know relatively straightforward and simple to do any of these type of deployments. And cool, yeah, we still get the socket connection died, so that life cycle is definitely my problem. But if I hit it again, looks like it disappeared. But the other challenge that we get. And this is something that I don't know how it's going to be solved, but it will have to be, uh, is the browser cache. Because the I've updated the SSR, but the, the, uh, the front-end assets, because I never redeployed this app, so the front-end assets are still going to point to something else. So you will have to be creative on ensuring that you bust your actual CDN cache because the markup needs to go away over here, um, which it usually does. But if my remote entry is still using whatever Versal uses for their cache, it's not going to invalidate. My browser's not going to download a new copy of it. It's going to think it already has one. So what I'm trying to do is incorporate like timestamps in here. So when it tries to go and get their remotes, um, Ah, uh, you know what? I can see that these remotes don't have a timestamp on the end, so that's probably what the what's causing it. So I need to go dig through wherever I implement these. But um, when it does a hot reload, I've kind of set it up under the hood where it can add time. Yeah, see, so if if it detects there was a hot reload on one of them, like on home, because that's where the header was, so now it automatically cache bust it when it came back in. Uh, it'll just add a timestamp onto it. Um, but these other ones aren't getting timestamped. And I'm pretty sure that that's likely what is causing the problem is uh, one of these graphs is still out of date. And then, yeah, I think still the, the HTML cache is going to be one to try and figure out. But some e tags and proper cache and validation with some events, and you should be. You should be fine. Or if you've got middleware or something like that, you can always change the e tag on the edge and just send back a clean one. And you know you should be good. And what's also really nice here is you know I have cache disabled and I have cache disabled on Versal, and you know my response time is still you know three seconds. It's it's not too bad, considering. I mean, it could be quicker, and definitely there's room for improvement here um, on my hot reload and the the chunk flush mechanism is doing more than it needs to do at the moment. But, you know, a two second response is still really good considering this is like four independent applications that only formed as I made the request. So anyway, that's the first look into server-side rendering and module federation for Next.js. And once I update the docs, I should be able to release a plugin soon for it.